you know, my heart is to, uh, I'm just kind of a music nerd through and through. Yeah. Uh, have been all my life. Yeah. Um, We're picking up on that. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that idea of, you know, grabbing, you know, you were talking about streaming and all that, you know, the day of grabbing tangible uh, items and album yeah. and looking mm -hmm. at the sleeve, looking at the jacket, who produced it, yeah. who was the engineer, who were the musicians involved, yep. the artwork, the whole thing. Did you know that the vinyl records actually sold more than CDs this last year or something like that? I know. It's yeah. like, a, it's a, like, a, like a, making a, a comeback. A resurgence. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. But uh, so I, I think the festival kind of plays to that idea is I've just always been a music fan. So other mm -hmm. than being a, a songwriter and a musician in my own right for about 25 years is I I guess I had that as kind of a um, as kind of an asset to be able to reach out to some of the community. Because yeah. uh, this came out of I was working as a merchandise manager uh, at Borders Books and Music, which is no longer with us. But they were the big competitor to Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And we had a cafe. I remember that, Borders, I should say. I actually bought a lot of books there when I was younger. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, our cafe was probably four times larger than the one at Barnes & Noble. Okay. Yeah. And we had an in-house PA. Mm -hmm. We had touring authors. We had touring musicians that would come through. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know. That's cool. I didn't realize that was there. Well, a lot of like solo artists that might yeah. be, or maybe if, even if they put out a full band album, maybe they mm -hmm. were on a solo tour to try to sell the record and stuff. Yeah. So point being that we had a lot of the. Uh, it's like coffee shop, coffee house vibe. Yeah. And yeah. we had the PA and all that to facilitate these things. But um, I approached my GM one year. I thought it would be a, good, a great way to bring people in during the slow time of the year. So yeah. after, after the holidays, I said, hey, uh, what do you think about putting on a festival in the cafe like the month of February? And it, it wasn't random. It was not only the slowest time of the year in uh, merchandise, but um, South by Southwest always, South by Southwest has always been the big kind of kickoff to the festival season. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, man, that would be cool to run a festival around that same time. And maybe we could capture yeah. some touring bands either coming to or coming back from. Or, you know, somebody's yeah, done earlier. Well, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a really cool idea. And, yeah. I mean, it was a long shot, but we, we had that going. Mm -hmm. But then also it was like, I'm going to reach out to the community and, and see who wants to play. Now, keep yeah. in mind, back then, the smoking ban was still in place. Mm -hmm. So people were allowed to smoke in all the venues and stuff that the citywide smoking ban hadn't gone through. Uh, also back then, if you wanted to hear live music, there were no early shows. You had to go out at 9 p.m. and stay out till 1. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no early shows. Yeah. So we promoted it as family-friendly, mm -hmm. smoke-free environment, and early shows. Because our store closed by 10, so we were yeah. putting on shows at 6 or 7. Yeah. And so every week, the month of February, Thursday through Sunday, we would showcase music. And I think the largest one we ever had there in store was probably 60 acts over the course of a month. 60 acts? Yeah. Oh, in a month. Okay. Over I was thinking the, like over, over a weekend. A but no, I mean, no. that's still, four I mean, weekends. 60 still in four weekends is quite a bit. Yeah.